Hi, Salman. Hi. Hi, Evelyn. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Hi, everyone. It's four o'clock on the dot. Um, I propose that we wait for one or two more minutes for everyone to come online, and then we can kick off the webinar. Thanks for your patience. All right, welcome everyone um, to the introduction to the global off-grid solar market data collection. So in the upcoming hour, um, we will introduce our sales data collection process, uh, which is a half yearly joint effort between Gogla, um, IFC Lighting Global and the Efficiency for Access Coalition. Um, so basically what we'll do is we will give some background on the data collection, um, basically why we do it, uh, why to participate and, and how to join. So the majority is basically spent on focusing how to navigate the data platform and share your data. Um, but before we dive into that um, chunk of you know, very uh, kind of like a, a demo, um, I'm joined by our partners, the partners Leo from ESD and Salman from IFC, um, who will be kicking off the the webinar by introducing kind of like the the what is the data collection and the why participate um, and then I will take you through the how. Um, just before I hand over to Salman, I wanted to note that all audience participants are muted um, and they will remain muted. So the Q&A session uh, will go via the question box in the little Zoom control panel that's usually at the bottom of your screen. Um, so drop your questions there throughout the webinar. Um, the recordings and the proceedings will be shared afterwards, uh, likely tomorrow and latest Monday. And we're mindful of everyone's time, so we'll have a, we'll have a hard stop uh, after one hour specifically. All right, then I would like to invite Salman to unmute and take us through the next few slides. Thank you, Evelyn. Um... So again, uh, hello everyone, um, and a belated but uh, still fresh 
Uh, Happy New Year to everyone who has joined today. Um, and again, a warm welcome to the new companies participating in this ROMS data collection as well. And also for returning companies um, who would find uh, some of these content to be a refresher and hopefully a, uh, you know, an enjoyable one. So again, um, again, I'm Salman Zahir. I'm uh, representing the IFC Lighting Global Program. I've been working there as a business development specialist and have been a part of this data collection exercise uh, for the last few years. Uh, first of all, again, uh, the need and importance for data, I think uh, it is very universal in today's business. Everyone needs data. It can be data on uh, competition. It can be data on the markets. It can be data on what the consumers are buying, what kind of business models are doing well. Uh, but there's a severe lack of reliable data out there. And this is where uh, this data collection exercise actually comes in. Um, you know, uh, the data collected from here would benefit manufacturers, distributors, investors, donors, policymakers, everyone who needs to understand uh, the market of grid solar market. So uh, again, um, for today's webinar, as I said, my portion would be to just give a brief overview of the data collection exercise. Uh, the data this data collection exercise has been running for a number of years now. And uh, you know, in the earlier days, data was collected on solar lighting kits, but uh, for the past uh, four rounds, we have been collecting uh, data on off-grid appliances as well. So over the years, we have had more and more participants and uh, this has enriched the market insights we have gathered. This has enriched uh, the, you know, the report that comes out from this data and the uh, trends that are identified. And it's again, a process where we are uh, finding more and more companies participating every round and we expect this round uh, to be similar. So the guiding philosophy, I would say for uh, this overall exercise is to uh, make sure that the data collected is kept fully confidential and uh, the companies uh, get access to anonymized cumulative uh, data that would help them take better decisions and formulate better, better strategies. So yes, uh, you know, a company sitting on their own data might not know the overall market, but everyone sharing and sharing their data anonymously would definitely benefit uh, from the overall picture uh, that can be captured. Uh, the sales information collection is a biannual exercise and it is led by Gogla and supported by the World Bank Group's Lighting Global Program and Efficiency for Access Coalition. So just a bit of background uh, for the new companies uh, on uh, with, what, you know, what these organizations are <laughs> that I mentioned. So, Gogla, uh, that is the Global Off-Grid Lighting Association. This was established in 2012, and I think right now represents over 180 members. So it's an independent, not-for-profit uh, off-grid solar industry association, and its mission is to help their members build sustainable markets and deliver quality, affordable products across the world in developing countries. Efficiency for Access is a global coalition working to promote highly efficient appliances that contribute to clean energy access for the world's poorest people. Uh, CLASP and UK's Energy Saving Trust serves as uh, secretariat of the uh, coalition. And uh, Efficiency for Access works by accelerating the growth of the off-grid appliance market. Um, and uh, definitely that also supports the, uh, is supported by the off-grid solar market as well. Lighting Global is the World Bank Group's initiative to rapidly uh, you know, accelerate uh, the access to off-grid solar energy for the nearly 780 million uh, people living without electricity around the world. And uh, the Lighting Global program works with manufacturers, governments, and the other development partners to build off-grid solar markets that are sustainable. So that's a bit of a background on uh, the part, you know, the uh, different organizations uh, leading this effort. Now on the information, uh, the data collection exercise, information is collected from Google members and Lighting Global Quality Standards, which is also known as Verisol Quality Standards right now, uh, meeting companies for off-grid solar and uh, appliances as well. 
but again, for appliances companies who are involved with the Global LEAP Award and the Low Energy Inclusive Appliances Program, they also participate uh, to contribute to the appliance data portion that we have. For solar lighting, only full kits of lanterns, uh, multi-light systems or solar home systems is considered. So it, it basically what it means is uh, it has to be a complete kit uh, to be included or recognized in the sales data collection. Uh, anything that is sold on a standalone basis like a panel or LED lights, they would not be uh, considered. Uh, for appliances, TVs, fans, refrigeration unit, solar water pumps are uh, considered currently. Right. Um, again, the final outcome would be available in the form of uh, online sales data platform. It would be shown a bit later, so I'm not going to go into details of that. Uh, but there would also be a sales data report uh, that uh, you know uh, that is basically a detailed snapshot of what is happening, and that comes out biannually or every six months. All right, um, with that, I'll move on to, you know, what uh, kind of outputs do we get? So this is uh, basically what we have seen in the Jan to June 2020 period. Uh, the outputs of the sales data, this is a very high level overview of what we have seen. Uh, first, I'm going to go through what we have seen for lighting, and then we will go through what we have seen for appliances. For lighting, we have seen 3 million products of grid solar products being sold out of which 2 million has been sold as cash and 1 million as pay as you go. And two, nearly 2 million were portable lanterns that were sold, 560,000 were solar home system sales and 480,000 was multi-light systems. The main thing uh, here would be that last round and with this round's data collection, uh, we, this would be the first year of data collection on uh, what we found like, you know, the impact of COVID in the market. And uh, in the last round, that is the Jan to June 2020, uh, we saw that the overall global sales was affected by COVID. When it, the overall sales fell by 26%. And this was you know, uh, the lowest volume we saw since 2014. Uh, but again, uh, what we did see was uh, you know, pay go sales was basically showing more resilience than cash. And uh, that also kind of, uh, got the importance of pay-as-you-go uh, sales models uh, in, in the last mile, and it is still important, and it is still something to focus on. But what this, uh, you know, decline meant was that we had to kind of, uh, we missed out on estimated 5 million people who could have benefited but could not get access to electricity because of the impact of COVID this round. Um, so moving on to the next slide, Right. Um, if we look into uh, appliances, we saw that, uh, you know, the number of overall all appliance categories uh, showed decline uh, other than fans. And the reason fan sales actually grew uh, was based on uh, seasonality, because we often see that the first half of the year, manufacturers or, you know, distributors stock up on fans and they distribute it throughout the year. Um, but I think this is a good point to a put a bit of focus into in the sense that our report for the new companies, our report not only gives you numbers and trends, we also try to dig into the reasoning as to why those trends might have occurred. And we kind of uh, do stakeholder consultations to understand the reason the market is behaving in the way it is. So, so I would say that in that way, it definitely goes one step beyond just being a sales report. It, it definitely gives a lot of market intelligence that is helpful for everyone to understand the market. Um, that being said, we also saw refrigeration units, 4,400 units were sold. And um, uh, this uh, actually, the refrigeration unit sales actually grew in East and West Africa, which was uh, encouraging for everyone. Solar water pumps, experienced the largest decrease uh, overall of 87%. Uh, uh, again, uh, we also saw 225,000 radios being sold. So again, I think with this round's data, we will have a more well-rounded picture of how the appliance markets and the TV markets are behaving, whether market recovery is indeed happening or not. So it would be interesting to see. 
with that being said, I think I've, I've hogged a lot of time and I would uh, like to ask Leo uh, to kind of uh, help everyone understand why they should be participating in this data collection exercise. Leo. Thank you very much, Salman. I hope you can all hear me clearly here. Um, so that was really thorough overview. So I know I'm especially for those of you who are new to the exercise or new to companies who've previously been joining the exercise. Uh, we hope that that gives you enough background. Um, but as with all of the presentation, please do send any emails to us with questions you might have specifically if you want to clarify anything in particular. Um, so I wanted to draw your attention to really the value that you have, because we do appreciate it takes a lot of us, well, a significant amount of time. I wouldn't say a lot it very, it, to participate, but it varies depending on uh, your company and how many products you um, are selling, which meet those um, categories that Salmon's over uh, provided. So we wanted just to really clarify what value goes directly to you as a company from participating. And then thanks to your participation, how do you help the broader sector um, and the work of um, those who are frankly working on behalf of um, companies and the ultimate beneficiaries? So the, the main point to emphasize here is that once you share your confidential data with us, then you get a personalized market share report which has your sales um, precisely listed and an aggregate of all other sales in order to show yours benchmarked, if you like, or your market share compared to the overall um, sales in the industry. And we've um, really found that this has been incredibly valuable, of course, to companies who are seeking to understand their position. Um, and those of you who wouldn't be able to have this information, particularly on a global level, to see how your sales are doing across um, all the major markets. So in order to, um, to, to give you that, we've also, and uh, we'll go into details on this later, we've built a complete dashboard and online platform. Um, so where you go to enter your data, is where you will then go afterwards to view your data and to print all of these different reports to access this personalized market share. So we wanted to emphasize that that really is one of the biggest values that we've heard from companies participating um, and want to share that with you so you're aware. This is certainly not a one-way relationship. Um, so alongside that, there's a very um, other critically important area of um, you can actually measure the impact of product sales on the end use beneficiaries because we um, automatically calculate these impact metrics uh, because Goggler has created this, for those of you who are not aware, the overall impact framework for measuring um, off-grid solar lighting products. And as of uh, this round, um, Goggler has also teamed up with the Efficiency for Access layer program in order to provide some measure of impact reporting, both for fans and refrigerators, um, sorry, televisions. And so at this stage, what you'll be seeing is uh, it'll enable you to report to impact investors or to build a bigger uh, pitch, if you like, of the impact you're making as well as the financial um, uh, value of your products. Um, along with that, um, as of this round, um, for now, you can still see the historical calculations only of lighting products, but going forward, you'll be able to see that for the off-grid appliances also. And as I already mentioned, you get these through this online environment, um, which, uh, um, so excuse me, Evelyn will show you. Uh, I just want to emphasize that that alone is, is um, one of the major resources that we've invested in um, to give you access to this data by through that online environment. Um, but that's, that's direct. What you provide to the broader sector and to the advocacy and the um, broader sector ecosystem uh, building work of Goggler and other development partners really, is that by sharing your data, as Salman said, you provide us with the world's best insight into this off-grid market. We share that in aggregate in this public report that we have twice a year. And then that data also goes into the biannual of uh, market um, state of the market report, which we provide broader market trends. And really, um, overall, what this has done is not only created greater awareness of the sector, but it's really built the credibility um, that this sector is of 
making a viable and a really valuable impact and has the potential to grow and is worth the millions of dollars of um, investment that's coming into the sector and particularly an increasing government recognition of using this channel in order to promote energy access and increasingly productive uses. So if you like, without that data, um, there is no ammunition um, the, uh, to prove that this, to really fight, if you like, for this sector. And so that is why this is one of the most valuable undertakings um, that, that we have been um, pursuing these last few years. Okay, um, I think with that, that's a thoroughly um, overview of that slide. If we just wanted to share with you, this exercise has been going for almost 10 years, um, first by IFC Lighting Global, and then taken on by Gogla um, uh, about uh, almost five years ago now. And one of the most important points we wanted to emphasize are that this process is trusted by the leading agencies and companies who are working in this sector. Um, we have an example in front of you here from uh, one of the founders of D-Lite. Uh, we were working with D-Lite since they literally were founded um, and they've grown into the organization they have. And they were the, one of the first to recognize the value of this deep and detailed market um, insight provided here. And so we hope that we can support you to grow in a similar way and that you'll give us your trust and um, find that in return, you know, we can um, really develop strong partnerships based on this work. Thank you, and uh, we can move on. So as I was mentioning earlier, this is a chance just to show to you the online platform, um, which uh, Evelyn will go into more details on. So when you're participating, this is what you'll, as I said, put your data into, you'll get a personalized invite, which Evelyn will go through later. But once you've provided that data at any time, you can access your dashboard on the online platform. And this really gives you the chance to view many different areas of, of your work. It benchmarks your sales against others. And as you'll see here, um, this actually gives you personalized reporting which you can see the granular individual sales on a much um, greater level than when we're producing the public report. You can navigate throughout the website by using all of these different, very um, intuitive interfaces. And through doing that, you can see the sales results, not only from the last period, but this again shows the value of entering historical data that we invite you to do at every round. Enter the historical aggregate sales for past years, and then you can even get to see um, how you've been performing for years before you've participated. Um, this will give you many different interfaces, as I was saying, in order to see the data um, on, on the graphs that are being shown in front of you. Those are actually, uh, that's actually the dashboard where you can then click on those individual graphs and go um, deep into the regions to get individual country. You can select the individual countries you want to view data for. You can, if you are selling a variety of products, you can even just select to look at different uh, size solar systems or different appliances if you're selling many of them in different regions um, and even over different time periods. And then you can print off all of these um, graphs so that you don't have to give access to this to others in order to share your information. You can then just share individual graphs. Uh, we've also uh, found that this can then give, again, third party credibility to any um, reports you're giving to investors, board members or potential donor partners of course, where you can use these graphs to indicate um, aspects of your company's performance. And as I mentioned, you can do that for both sales, but also for impact in the solar space. And for this first round, we're going to, right now, the data you share now will be used to calculate the impact for fan and TV appliances. Uh, so we're very um, proud to have developed that over the last year of deep industry consultations. Um, and we'll be unveiling that um, in the next few months after this current data um, round is finished. So really with that, um, I just wanted to move on to finalize. 
what you'll see next on this final slide is just what we're going to be looking at the output of the public report now, as I mentioned. This is what the world will see. Um, and this is only the aggregated data. And I can't stress that enough. At no point does your company's confidential data get out there. Um, and this report has become really um, the uh, go-to resource, which is produced every six months. As we mentioned earlier, you've got a strict confidentiality through this three data point rule. And just to stress that again, no data point is reported unless that data point is a aggregation of three different companies' data, whether it be for a range of solar lanterns, we would only report sales of any one category if more than three companies were selling those solar lanterns. And the same, if you're the only company, one or even two companies selling a product in a country, then we won't report that um, value, even if it's for uh, a much broader aggregate, unless there are at least three companies reporting. So that really is what we've been using um, for all of this time in order to protect confidentiality. So what you'll just see here on the report is, uh, on the table below, is how the report is structured. Uh, and this is just as we mentioned before, it's um, overall we focus on what we're calling solar lighting kits and important to stress those are solar lanterns and solar home systems up to um, around 350 watts is generally the categories you'll see in the breakdown. We don't report um, the segmentation uh, beyond 200 watts, um, but we have a lot more segmentation for the smaller range of solar lighting kits. As it says there, seven product categories, um, you can see a breakdown there. Um, I won't go into too many details here, but just to emphasize again, that under the energy efficient off-grid um, appropriate appliances, we report on TVs, fans, solar water pumps, and refrigeration units. And again, each of those different groups of appliances are broken down into the respective categories, as long as the data meets the three-point rule. So we will report different size of TVs, for example. Um, or fans, different volumes of refrigeration units. All of this is reported by region and for individual countries. And we provide impact estimates of those applicable appliances in the report. And finally, as we're still under this scourge of the COVID um, uh, pandemic, we're also going to be including um, features of how that pandemic has impacted um, sales and the market during this period. If you haven't looked at it, I'll just want to finish by plugging the last report where it included this very thorough overview of the general um, impact um, that we have been able to um, assess uh, that COVID-19 has, uh, has had on, on our sector through those consultations that um, Salman mentioned. So highly recommend you go back to that as a reference. And I really look forward to seeing um, your data and to assisting in reporting this um, back to you over the coming few months. And with that, I'll hand over to Evelyn and happy to answer any questions on the call or over email later. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Leo. Um, well, I mean, if this doesn't um, motivate or, or energize companies to, to join the, the data collection process, then I don't know what will. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna dive into the, into the practical uh, details of the data collection process. Um, I also realize I haven't very elaborately introduced myself. So I'm Evelyn, um, I'm the Senior Engagement Advisor at Gokla, and especially in the data collection, uh, yeah, the collection bit of the, when the questionnaire is open and when, you know, you are reporting your data, I will be your point of contact. And so this is a, a timeline overview of kind of what will happen. Um, there is the moment you log in on the on the portal, you will see the data sharing agreement. So if you want to know in detail um, how how we treat our data and who has access to your data, then you know you, this is the the document that you can uh, can read. So you will uh, you will receive an email when the detail uh, when the data collection uh, opens, and um, there is a link to the data sharing agreement as well. So in January, for starting Monday, the 11th of January. Um, the data platform will open and will be, uh, you know, uh, available for you to uh, report all the details and your sales. Um, it will be open for two weeks. Uh, so please 
make sure that you fill, uh, fill in your data as soon as possible. Um, we will be sending you reminders and follow-ups if you are um, waiting until the last minute. So, you know, the, the, the less emails you wish to receive from us, the, you know, the, the better it is to, to fill it in as soon as possible. And then after that data collection round has closed, we will spend February and March to do quality control and analysis on your data. And so we, there is a chance we get back to you if there's like some, something that kind of, um, you know, attracts our, our uh, attention, if there's any questions, if there's a data point that we feel like might, you know, might be an error or like a, a typo or something like this, we come back to you and we check. And then um, in April and May, the results will be made available for you. Um, we strive uh, to have the, the personalized online environments available at least a week before the public report is available. So you'll have first access to all the data as well. Um, and then at any point throughout this whole process, then please you know, feel free to, to reach out for, uh, with any questions that you might have. Then how to participate? Um, very simply, we have five steps. You log in onto the data.gogla.org platform. That's where the platform is. You will receive in your email, um, if, you if this is the first time you are participating, you will receive a one-time login link in your email, um, which you can click and activate your account that we have created for you. So we have received your contact details, either you're a member of Gogla or an affiliate of IFC Lighting Global or in the network of Global Leap and Lea. Um, and so this is also why you've been, you know, you've received the registration uh, link to the webinar. But if there is anyone who should be included with an account in your organization, do let me know. Then I will uh, create one and make sure that they can also log in. Then there is basically three sections, which are general info questions on your company, your products and your regions or your cell. Then from all the products that you report, we will want product specifications. We will want to have all the sales of all the, com or all the products you report on. And then the final step, the most important one, is you submit. Um, what I'll do, and I'm looking at the time, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll go through the slide deck, which you can use as a reference um, manual as well. Um, and every now and then, I think I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find a, a moment that I can swap to the actual platform online and navigate it. Depends a little bit on how much time we have left because I want to um, leave some time for Q&A. Um, but when you log in, or when you click that one time login link, this is where you end up. And to kind of start the, the questionnaire, you can uh, you, 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 know, you click on the, the first button. The second button for your results will not be available for you yet. That comes later. You'll also see that in the text below, that's also where you can access the data sharing agreement. You enter the first general questions uh, tab automatically. There's also an intro tab with some information, um, but the general questions is where you start this. You need to fill in and you need to fill all of it in before you can access any of the other tabs. And that's because anything you fill in here will feed into those tabs. Now, questions that are marked with an asterisk are, uh, are mandatory. And so they need to be filled in. Um, the others, you know, we, there's, we're obviously keen to have that information but it's not essential for your participation. So once you have entered your company details, um, you'll have to choose which products you sell. So you can sell, um, if you sell lighting, only lighting products, select the first one. You can also you know, select appliances or select both. And then if you're dealing with lighting products, this is actually the tab where we will ask you to specify if you're selling your own branded products or if you distribute other companies' products. However, for appliances, this same question will be asked on the product level because uh, we found cases that, for example, you know, you might be selling TVs and fans, and then you manufacture your own fans, but then you are a distributor of someone else's TVs. So that's done later on in the later tabs, but it will come and it is important. The next thing we want you to do is we want you to list all your products. So if you've selected lighting, then we want you to fill in the, the names of the products, um, just either the, um, the trading name or a, a very logical name. Please make them, make them logical names so we can um, 
do a good quality control on this. Um, we ask you to not group your product lines, but every single product that you sell needs to be on a new line. And you can add a line by clicking where the pink arrow is, uh, is pointing to add like in product. Now, if you've participated before, and that's, this, is, you know, this is a good thing, you'll have to do this exercise only once. Um, and when you return, those products will be preloaded. And then you'll only have to add a new product if you have a new product. Then you still see these two columns here. This asks if you, so, if you sell this product in the, in the round that we're collecting, you say yes and yes, if you sold them. And then you specify how you sell them. So did you send, sell them B2B? So to a distributor or the government or an NGO or a bulk purchaser? Or was the sale directly to a customer? So that's important to, uh, to include. You can also select both here if you sell to sell both. Now it can also be possible that once you know if it's preloaded, so if you're returning a in returning participant, um, the product is preloaded, but you don't sell it anymore, then you select no here, and that's important to do. For appliances, it's the same procedure. Um, there's also just you know you'll have explanatory notes below all the questions as well. So also here, please name every appliance or add every appliance on a different, uh, different line. Please also note that if you have, for example, a, a solar home system kit that you fill in here, that you sell with a TV, then you, and you sell it also without a TV, then those are, um, you can add them differently because they're different product categories or um, you know, different products that you sell and you'll, they'll, they'll have like, I don't know, they'll have a different, uh, different pricing. But then please also add the TV in this section as a separate product again. There are, so there's two more questions on employment, though, which are not mandatory, but uh, accurate input on this is actually highly appreciated. Um, so if you have that, then please add it. And then the next important question, number eight, is where you can indicate the regions you sell. And so first at the top, you'll see the broader regions where you sell, so you can select regions. And then if you scroll further down, for every region you selected, all the countries appear. Also, please select all the countries that you sell in. And this will then show up again in the later tabs of, your, uh, of when you're filling in um, your sales. Now, in the next section, so you then move to product specifications and you have it for lighting and for appliances. And here we will need you to fill in um, the product specs of, your, of every single product separately. Um, and you will find all the products that you entered in the general tab, you find them listed here. Um, you can expand by clicking on the arrow that's next to it, to the left. Um, the lines are red if you still need to fill in mandatory product specs, but once if for one product uh, the, the, the mandatory questions are filled in, it, they turn gray with a check mark. Now, you will find once you, you click, and I'll, this is, I'll, I'll go to the, to the platform after the slide to, to show you. But once you've clicked on you know, one of the, the products, so say you click on test one, then questions appear below it. So you will find again, a number of mandatory questions, which I've listed here. And I will show you that on the platform live in a bit, but I just want to point out that there's a question on the quality verific verification status of the products that you listed. Um, please note that once you are uh, invited to join, you can, um, you can report on products that are both quality verified and not quality verified. So basically you, you, know, you receive an invitation based on your affiliation, or if you have a product that's QV. But once invited, you can report all eligible products, so all lighting kits and the appliances mentioned. Only when you have no affiliation or no quality verified products at all, you are no longer um, you know, invited to participate. But please don't just limit to your, uh, to your QV status. Now, let me see if I can quickly switch to the platform. So this is what the, the platform looks like um, on the, 
website. So for test one and two, I've already pre-filled some of the specifications. But here, here you see the question. So is the product currently qualified, uh, quality verified? Um, there is a warranty period question. There is a runtime question. And if there is only one setting available, please just enter it as a mid setting. We will ask you about the lumens of your solar product. We will ask you about the light points of your solar product, um, how many outlets there are, and which appliances the product is capable of powering. Now we've added here radio, mobile phone, fan, TV, and fridge. And then you see two other boxes. So for example, if it also powers, um, let's say a, a hair clipper, then you can click other and you can click, hair, you know, you write hair clipper here. If there is another product like um, an egg incubator, then please add that separately. Um, so far, we haven't had any, any, any more products added than two. So that's why there's two other boxes. But if you have another appliance, we do collect it. And we do want to know so that we can kind of like keep that in mind as we are kind of developing and, and building out this, um, this data collection exercise. Now, we also want to know which appliances are included in the package that you sell, sell and in the sales price. Um, then some more uh, specifications on panel wattage, panel type and the battery. And then we want to know um, if the product is sold on a Pago basis or on a cash basis. And basically Pago is um, if the end customer purchases the, the product in more than one installment or cash if it's paid in one installment. Um, and then for B2C and B2B, you also see that, you know, we want to, we're, we've refined it a little bit, the definition as well. Um, in order to estimate the, um, the, Pago, the, the, the market value of, of Pago products also specifically, we do ask you to uh, share the free onboard price um, and the total cost of ownership. So this is important for us to estimate those uh, the market value. And it's also important for some of the impact, um, impact estimates that we produce. For the wholesale free onboard price, we, you know, we mean the price per unit for a, a thousand unit minimum order quantity. And when we look at the estimated total cost of ownership, which is related to Pago, this represents the average amount of US dollars received from a customer repaying the product in full and on time without applying a financial discount rate to this value. Um, so it's quite specific, um, but important information for us to have. Then, we have a similar uh, exercise for appliances. So please note that for um, appliances products, and this is important for, for you know, participants that report on appliances, um, we do have your product specifications preloaded, but there is one question that will always need reviewing. So we will also need you to at least review this section and look at that particular question. Um, and I will, uh, let me actually show you where that is. So you go to the next product specifications tab. And then once you're there, um, there's two questions that I wanted to highlight uh, first. So one is that we're asking for the warranty period again, which is uh, for the appliance itself. But then there's an, an additional question that wants to know if there are significant differences between the warranties of the different system components. So these are new questions, um, as well as the fact if it includes a user manual. These, um, these questions are important for us to know to be able to calculate if you sell fans or TVs, uh, to calculate impact estimates for you that you can then also view on the, on the platform. Now, if you look at, um, at filling in the, the questions for the appliances, there are uh, several options that um, you can choose for which appliance it is. Here I picked fan. 
there are a number of um, questions that are the same for every appliance. And, what, and the question that, like, that changes or that needs to be reviewed every time is this particular question. Uh, if this, um, the appliance is sold bundled or unbundled with a power system. And what we want to be, the idea behind this is that, uh, you know, this, this particular information is not static over time and we're curious and, and interested to see how that changes. And so the total needs to be a hundred here. So if you fill in 80 here, then this needs to be 20 because otherwise this box will remain red. So we need to make sure that the box is green um, and otherwise you cannot submit your questionnaire because all the mandatory questions need to be filled in correctly. Now there are some additional uh, additional questions on you know, product specifications and then lower here you see you know what type of fan is needed so then we get some fan specific questions and these change based on what you select up here. So if you go to a refrigeration unit then you see that here the the specific type changes, you know, because then of course you know, it needs to be about the refrigeration unit. Is it a chest or upright fridge? What's the what's the volume there? And uh, how you know how uh, how do you store the energy? Um, but then for all the all the different appliances, we do still have you know how do you what's the business model that you sell the product with, um, and the free onboard price. All right, again, also here if you see if you see this. This setup, you need to make sure that the, the lower box is 100. Then we come to the most important part of the data collection, reporting sales. Um, as you've probably seen, there, uh, you know, you've been filling in the questionnaire for a while. And actually, at the bottom here, you can also just click save and exit. So if you at some point need to take a break, or you need to um, you need to check in with a colleague. You need to you know get the, the sales data from somewhere else. Then this is something that you can you know you can click save and exit. Uh, but what's important to know is that you need to log out of the platform because we can only have one employee per company at a, any given time filling in the questionnaire. And the reason for this is that we cannot risk. Um, creating conflicting versions of whatever is inputted because we cannot choose uh, what's the right one and you might not be, you know, might be tracking that. The questionnaire is not finalized if you click save and exit. So that comes later and I'll show you, but you really need to make sure that you finalize and submit because we cannot consider any partially filled in questionnaire. Now, if we go to the sales tabs, um, and I'll, I'll go back to the platform in a bit. You'll see that uh, the sales of you know that we want you to report on the months of July and December, they're added in or they're actually you can add them here in this in this first red box um, for both lighting and appliances. Note, and it's important to note, that there are separate tabs for B two B sales and B two C sales per region. And once you click on, you know, for example, the first line, then you see that you can fill in sales per country, per product. Um, and what's, what's added in those columns and in those rows is the information that you have put in, in the general questions section. So that's out of field. You don't need to write anything here yourself. You only need to fill in sales. Now, if you don't have any sales, then you can simply leave the. Oh, you can leave the. The fields blank. And I'm switching to this one again. I'm just making a quick show. Here you can fill in the sales. If you fill in 100 here, you can also fill in 500 here. The total, here below, changes automatically. You cannot fill that in, but if you click enter here, this updates. Now, that's for the um, for the current sales of this round, and I'm very happy to actually share with you that this round we have the option back to report on historical sales, 
uh, for lighting products and that we can actually introduce oh, the, um, the sales for appliances products. So if you are participating for the first time, you have the opportunity to add those sales here that we made covering previous rounds. Um, but once you have filled them in and this changed from, from last rounds, you cannot, you will not be able to, to change those values anymore in, you know, in upcoming rounds. So please make sure that if you do choose to report them, that you report them correctly. Um, you'll notice that you can do this on a, um, on a product level, but you can't do it on a country level because that's going to be um, too much of a, of, a, of, a, of a backtracking effort for us. Um, but these numbers will, at some point, they will, they will feed into some of the impact uh, estimates and into, uh, into your online data platform overview. All right. Um, I think that's about it. Once you have filled everything in, um, you'll go to the last, very last dot, number six, and submit. You'll have to check these two boxes that you've, you know, you've checked and updated any pre-filled specs of the lighting products and the same for uh, the appliances products. If you have any question or any comment that you want to share with us, you know, well, if you fill it in here, uh, we will see it. Um, if there's anything or any question that you missed, uh, you will not be able to click finalize and submit. So if you try to submit, there's actually a pop-up question or a pop-up uh, will come and uh, will show you where you need to go back to and, um, and still fill in either specifications. Again, we really cannot, we cannot look into your submission if you don't finalize and submit. So that's really important that you do this. Otherwise, the whole, the whole effort would have been for nothing. Um, then if you submit it, but you actually realize that, I don't know, you, you've missed out on 10,000 sales in a certain country and the round is still ongoing, um, please, you know, reach out to me and I can reopen the, the, um, the questionnaire again for you. Because the moment that you submit it, you cannot go back and change things anymore. Because the moment you submit, we need to start doing our quality control. All right. That's a lot of information in one go. Um, I hope everything was clear. Please do at any point or, you know, also now we still have 10 minutes, so there's time for, for questions. Um, please drop any questions you have in the uh, Q&A box for Zoom. Um, again, this will be, this whole recording will be shared with you. Um, you will get a link where you can view it. You will also get uh, the, the slide deck as a reference document that you can look at. Um, there's a lot of explanations also in the in the questionnaire themselves with every question, just to make you know make sure that everything is as clear as possible. And again, should you have any questions, you can always email me throughout the whole uh, collection process. All right, then. So far, um, I see that one question came in, which my uh, wonderful panelists have already answered. Um, so one of the questions, and I'll just I'll read it out loud so it, it can be useful for all the um, for all the attendees, and then maybe Salman, you just want to uh, you know chip in and and answer what you also shared with the with the person that asked the, the question. So the question was, what is the difference? between a multi-light system and a solar home system? Yeah, uh, can you hear me, Evelyn? Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. okay. Uh, so again, uh, thanks for that question. Um, again, the multi-light system as we uh, define in our uh, data collection methodology would be a solar home system that has multiple light points and allows mobile phone charging, uh, but the panel wattage would be between three to 10.99 watt pick. So just below 11 watt pick, uh, that would be a multi-light system. And a solar home system would 
also be a multi-light system, but uh, it has to have a watt pick of 11 watt pick or above. Um, yeah, and 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 it can it can go up as Leo had mentioned. Uh, but again, anything above 11 watt pick and uh, having multiple light points and charging a phone and also providing tier one uh, access to a household under the uh, multi-tier framework um, methodology, that would be considered as a solar home system in our uh, methodology. Fantastic, very clear. Um, I don't see any additional questions coming in. So maybe then, because we still have a few minutes, is there anything, someone and Leo, um, that, you know, I was, while I was talking, you think, I, I might have missed or I forgot to mention that we can still <laughs> highlight to our, our listeners. Hi, Evelyn and everyone. Just a brief point, and you did say this, but just to stress, when you're naming the products, um, I think uh, Evelyn mentioned it's important to use the consumer facing names or and to be clear with the names you provide. What one of the key points is that this is a database. And so if you call the product, you know, Sunny Light uh, with a Y, uh, one round and Sunny Light, and then you change it uh, later, it could make problems for us. Now, the first time you enter those names, as Evelyn said, you don't need to enter them again. So as you're entering a new product, just make sure that the name ties is, is both, you know, accurate but also that it is uh, the same one that's being used if you're consumer facing. Sometimes you have different teams who fill out these databases and some might use an internal product reference instead of the external consumer facing name. It's a very small thing, but it's, um, it's a helpful way of just uh, reminding your teams uh, about that. Thank you. Everything yeah. else I think was very thorough. <laughs> that's all I could think of, which is a good sign. Thank you. No, that's a very good one, Leo. And it will, um, you know, it will also help us considerably in, in the quality uh, control process and will also prevent us, you know, getting back to you time and again to, uh, to check and to, to match products. So yeah, excellent point. All right. Um then... From my end, Evelyn, I think I would have one request for the companies. Uh, you know, during uh, due to the COVID situation, we have seen that many companies have had uh, low periods of sales, which is very understandable. Uh, but uh, I would urge uh, all the participating companies that you know your data is anonymized, even if the numbers uh, might seem low. Uh, your contribution to the overall database also helps us understand if the industry is facing issues. And that also allows us to have dialogues with other, uh, you know, policymakers or, uh, you know, uh, other development organizations uh, to even get aid packages or, you know, think how uh, the situation can be relieved. So just participating is important, even if the sales numbers seem low to you. Uh, your participation would be helpful. And again, the data is anonymized. So other than you, uh, other, uh, you know, other users will never be able to know your particular numbers. So just would urge that even if the numbers are low, do participate. It's very important that you do. Yes, another excellent point. <laughs> Thanks, Salman. Um, all right. I think then at this point, I think the only thing that I would love to, to, to mention is um, we really look forward to, you know, to your participation. Um, you will receive the invite on Monday and, and uh, login instructions on Monday um, because that's when the round opens and I'll make sure that also before that time or, or at the same time, you will receive this, this information. Um, please feel free to reach out to us with any questions um, yeah, thanks so much for attending the, the webinar. Um, thanks so much, Leo and Salman, for, uh, for very clearly explaining and uh, giving some of the background and of the value adds uh, of, uh, of what we do and how we're gonna, you know, how we're gonna put the information out there. Um, yeah, 
have a lovely afternoon or, or evening. Thank you, Evelyn. And thank you, everyone who's participating. Have a great evening. Thank you, everyone. Good days and good nights. Bye.